This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. Hey, good morning and welcome to Monday. It is the morning drive on Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com with Jamie Lent and Jeff McGuire. I'm Chuck Hines. Great to have you with us as we start another week. It's uh, just a couple of weeks left in the year that we're going to call 2023, so hope it's been a uh, a good year for you or maybe in some cases a great year for you and if it if it hasn't well you know what there's always next year which is right around the corner okay which is always there's always next year so it'll be uh, it'll be coming at you soon today's uh, December the 11th so uh, let's see the 18th t- two weeks from today is Christmas three weeks from today is New Year's Day so you got uh, you got about 21 you know shopping days left in uh, in 2023 to try to Turn that frown around and make it a smile. We come to you this morning from the First United Bank studio and look forward to hearing from you today <clears throat> on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Go to double dot com for that or the mobile app. Visual Edge IT hotline is open too at 806 771 Well, I'll tell you what, it was a uh, it was a great Sunday of uh, NFL watching yesterday. Some of the games came out okay some not so good and how about them cowboys jimmy man alive they just they may they may be the best looking team in in football right now at least in the nfc yeah they look like the hottest team i don't think there's uh, any question of that um you know, I do think there's something to be said for the Eagles are 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 not firing on all cylinders by any stretch of the imagination mm-hmm. right now uh after what you've seen after, over the last few weeks but uh they definitely uh, Cowboys offensively just look like man they are they have put it all together and then defensively just kind of making plays when they need to. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously the three turnovers were massive in the game last night and all of them in plus territory for the Eagles that would have made that that game different. But I mean in all three instances, uh, Cowboys making plays. Yes, it right. wasn't mm-hmm. like just that they're the receivers or Jalen Hurts or whatever drop the ball on on their own i mean cowboys were making plays and uh give them credit for that so um yeah they look like a they look like a hot team right now and um they've given themselves a shot there to win the division mm-hmm. obviously the schedule is a little bit tougher for the cowboys but um man the way they're playing right now it feels like they're, they're up to the task cowboys moved to 10 and 3 eagles fall to 10 and 3 cowboys win it uh, yesterday uh, evening, 33-13 to 13 on Sunday Night Football, game you heard right here on Double T 97.3. Dak was uh, 24 of 39, 271 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, they ran the ball um, efficiently, kind of spread it around a little bit, 32 times for 132 yards, a rushing touchdown from uh, Rico Dowdle, uh, one that they had to review, uh, but that was reviewed, and they, they, they saw how the ball was across. I mean, he had kind of wormed his way underneath everybody and, and got the ball across the, the plane. Tony Pollard, 16 totes, 59 yards. Dowdle, 12 for 46. And then uh, from a receiving standpoint, Jake Ferguson <clears throat> with um, five catches for 72 yards. He, man, he's made you forget all about your tight end uh, position. He's, he's done a terrific job um, coming in and, and filling that spot. Uh, you mean he's made you forget the the, the tight end that you lost in the off season? Yeah. He's not. They're not forgetting the tight end. <laughs> no, 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 They're no, using no, it really they, well. They are using it really well. <laughs> yeah. No, you're you're right. You're right about that. He's been a major factor. Uh, Ceedee Lamb six catches, seventy one yards. Michael Gallup had three for forty eight. Brandon Cooks had two for thirty not thirty seven yards. So, um, you know, again, they just they just spread it out uh, all amongst them. And then Tony Pollard cut seven balls. For 37 yards, as they uh, they used him uh, quite frequently as well uh, last night. And then how about Stephon Gilmore? Man, nine catches or nine nine tackles uh, last night, all of them solo. And uh, yeah, and two of them were to end drives. Yeah, to, to massive, just massive ones. Mm-hmm. So uh, a great outing uh, for the Cowboys uh, as far as uh, last night is concerned. So as Jamie said, the schedule is going to 
stiffen up a little bit. Um, they'll play at Buffalo. Uh, Buffalo comes off of a win over Kansas City, and uh, Josh Allen was – he made spectacular plays uh, in that game. I mean, he made spectacular plays in that ball game. And, and then the Buffalo defense, I mean, they caused turnovers when they needed to. And um, I know people are going to complain about the end of the game, but the Chiefs got beat yesterday. They, they, they just – they got beat. They got beat – by a team that came in there and, and executed more plays and did more things uh, than what the Chiefs did. And that's it's just it's just plain and simple. So Buffalo fighting for a playoff spot. Uh, they'll play at home next week um, against uh, the Cowboys. And then the Cowboys have to go to Miami. And then they go at home to Detroit. And then they finish at Washington. So the next three weeks uh, for the Cowboys uh, are really, really challenging because uh, you're going to play – Obviously, uh, two contenders in the AFC, one that may make it to a Super Bowl. Who knows? Um, hell, one or two of them. I mean, neither one of them could. And then uh, Detroit, a team that uh, obviously has, has had a great, great season. So the Not next a three great weeks. Sunday, though. Yeah. No. Yeah. I don't know that it's any tougher. I mean, I would say the Eagles are better than any of those teams they just played. What the mm-hmm. challenge for the Cowboys is that they've been so awesome at home. And can they play the same way? Mm-hmm. you know on the on the road or whatever you know and then and then you kind of look at what the eagles have been to i mean they've they've been through a, a gauntlet uh themselves um here over the last couple of weeks you know they won uh last week at, at kansas city but um you know they've they've had they've had a tough stretch too i mean they they lost to the 49ers they beat the bills in overtime they won at kansas city uh and then they won uh at home against um against the cowboys so their their last three weeks um last four weeks have been not counting yesterday have been have been pretty tough as well and then their their stretch is going to get a little bit easier they'll play at seattle a week from tonight then they uh, host the giants host the cardinals at the giants so they they finish um obviously with an easier stretch than the cowboys so it this division race is by no means over yeah, no, I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say so. By, by no by no means at all. So uh, your uh, thoughts and comments this morning, Gates Flooring Center chat line, it's open. Visual Edge IT hotline, it's open. Lots on the uh, on the docket today to get to. Lots of, of sports um, going on and, and uh, news as well from the sporting world. Red Raiders and uh, Lady Raiders off this weekend from a basketball standpoint. Texas Tech football Saturday. They'll play in the Independence Bowl. We'll have coverage all week long here on their road to Shreveport. It's- the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com with Jamie Lent and Jeff McGuire. I'm Chuck Hines. Man, how uh, how quickly a week can can change things. You know, we talked, uh, we talked last week, one of your questions of the day was, are the Cowboys a Super Bowl contender? And uh, can't uh, can't just immediately just kind of remove all the warts just because you you have a big win at home. Um, and it was a big win last night, um, but you'd have to elevate them to that. And now it's a no question, right? Super Bowl contender. Yeah, um, and the the list is not real long of teams that I think are legitimate contenders. The problem is, I think that two, or specifically the one that I think is the most likely if you're betting the house on somebody right now it's the san francisco 49ers Mm -hmm. right and if you were um you know second in that would probably be the cowboys but you know if things go like kind of according to what it looks like again the cowboys would still have to play at philly and at san francisco to get to um the super bowl so do I think they're they're good enough to to be either one of those two teams? Sure I do. Even if even if it's on the road, do I think that they it's likely that they beat those two teams back to back on the road? I do not. Um that's a really tough task. It doesn't mean it's impossible. Mm-hmm. It's just a it's just a really tough road for the Cowboys. Even though I think they're better than the Eagles. Okay, and I, I don't I wouldn't say that about the 49ers. I would still say the 49ers are the favorite, especially now that they have the number one seed, mm-hmm. um, 
I just think that's a really tall task for any team to to go through what the Cowboys are going to have to go through. I mean, if I was predicting it right now, I would predict them to go to Philly and win and then um, lose on the road at at San Francisco. Uh, ESPN puts out a projecting the NFC playoff field, and right now they give uh, the 49ers a 51% chance to make it to the Super Bowl, the Eagles an 18% chance, and the Cowboys – a 23% uh, percent yeah, chance. Feels about fair. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, anybody else is uh, is in single digits. I mean, the next closest would be uh, the Lions at 4%. And everybody else is. And then Green Bay's at 1%. And the others that are in the playoff picture right now, less than less than 1%. Um, so that that's kind of interesting. In the... In the AFC right now, it's um, Baltimore at 33%, and then the Dolphins at 33%. Chiefs at 19% seems high, especially after losing now three straight. Jaguars at 6%, and then and then it goes down uh, from there. They have the Bills at uh, at 5%, and the Bills are, are still trying to, unlikely to make the playoffs. Yeah, so. trying to make trying to make the playoffs. Right, they have a is scheduled to be a 38% chance right now as of right now um to make to make the playoffs. So, yeah, you know, they still have uh they still have a little bit of a little bit of work to do. And and maybe the and I think they're talking about it. We just haven't talked about it and really it's not been on my radar cuz I just haven't I haven't watched any of their games. But the Ravens at this point in time, they may be they may be if not the best, one of the two best in the AFC. It'd be hard to not pick them as the favorite right now. Yeah, yeah. The only the only team that I might pick uh, would be uh, Miami. Um, just because yet to be anybody good, right? So, so, so <laughs> in, in just I wouldn't. I would stick with the Ravens. So Dolphins play uh, uh, Monday night tonight. There's a, a Monday night doubleheader tonight. Dolphins are favored by 13 and a half. They'll play Tennessee tonight. So even after tonight, they even still won't right, have to beat anybody. Right, right. And then the other game tonight, and why they're doing this, I do not know. Uh, but the Packers and the Giants are playing tonight at the Meadowlands, and Green Bay is favored by six. I think I saw where one of the games is on ESPN+. Plus. So your answer is to try to force people to get... To ESPN Plus. ESPN Plus. That's yeah. why they're doing it. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like on. I think it's on ABC in the in Green Bay and in New York, and then for the rest of the country, it's ESPN Plus. That's how that would work. But okay. still, yeah, yeah. They're, still they're, makes your point. Again, they're trying to force people to buy an ESPN Plus subscription. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 exactly right. That's exactly right. It's well, called, good luck. Called marketing and business. It is. It's it's called just trying to trying to kind of force the deal. Uh, the Dolphins yesterday beat the Washington Commanders mm-hmm. forty five to fifteen. Jamie, yeah, tough one. <laughs> that was a very, very much, very much a tough one. Um, so it was. I mean, I I watched a lot of football yesterday. The uh, the Jets game, the Jets and the Falcons, was a nothing nothing game at the half. Jets beat the Texans. I thought. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I got. I'm in the wrong week here. Well, uh, yes. Jets beat the Texans, thirty to six. It was nothing. Nothing at the half. Yeesh. Yeah, the Texans. I was working. That's a really disappointing. I was working and listening is what I was doing. Um, so I had my my eyes on my computer and my ears listening to the TV. No, not and, uh, the uh, the um, the Texans had played. You know, kind of felt like they were. You know, kind of a hot team and playing well. And mm-hmm. man, did they lay an egg yesterday? It was raining to beat the band in New York. I mean, it was in the first half just coming down in sheets. It was it was amazing. There weren't more turnovers. It was amazing they could throw the ball. It was amazing they could hang on to the ball. It was amazing they could punt it. It was amazing that Zach Wilson led a team to thirty points. Yes, and and <laughs> and all of those in the second half. All all of those in the second half. Um, I'll give you the numbers on Zach just since you since you brought that up. And CJ Stroud left with uh, an injury. Yeah. Uh, Zach Wilson, 27 to 36, 301 yards, two touchdowns. Good numbers. Good numbers. Um, speaking of the Ravens, 
Did you see how they won yesterday on a, a walk-off punt return, a walk-off in, overtime. Punt return in overtime over the Rams, 37-31? to 31. And then a real th- thriller in Vegas uh, yesterday. Uh, the Vikings beat the Raiders 3 to nothing. Mm. Three to nothing. So it was a, and it, it took to a minute and 57 to go in the game. Greg Joseph kicks a three, 36 yard field goal to give the Vikings the victory. Well, they made it exciting down to the finish. <laughs> yes. Didn't want to tease you with scoring points did, in the first quarter or did anything not like wanna, that and think you're going to get a lot more. Didn't want to tease you. Uh, how proud of you were the of the Bills yesterday? I'm I'm happy they won. You're happy happy that they won. Okay, um, it was uh, uh, Josh Allen went 23 of 42, 233 yards, threw a touchdown, threw an interception, um, but man, he had a acrobatic throw just to stay in bounds, and then they had an acrobatic catch, and then. They come up with a fumble recovery. Well, it kind of squirts out of bounds, but they did their they did what they needed to do, um, and the Bills uh, beat the Chiefs uh, twenty to seventeen. Um, as Mahomes uh, could not overcome an interception and then a fumble as well, he went twenty five of forty three, two hundred seventy one yards, and uh, the Chiefs lose twenty to seventeen. So they fall to eight and five on the season. I, I got to tell you, I'm I'm. Uh, the the whining after the game yesterday. I mean, there there was a there was a, a pass play uh, to um, Travis Kelsey, and then he throws it back across uh, the field Which, to I Kadarius mean, Tony. One of the most probably the coolest thing I've play I've ever seen on a football field. It was so incredibly cool. I mean, what well, wide receiver, tight end, whatever, running back. Catches the ball, runs down the field on their 10 yards or so, and then turns and throws a perfect spiral across the field yeah. for a lateral. I mean, it was the coolest play in the history of ever, maybe. And that didn't count. It didn't count because Kadarius Tony was lined up off sides. I mean, it, and it wasn't just a little bit. I, I almost liken it to the guy like me that drives five over all the time and then all of a sudden decides to drive 10 over and gets pulled over. And it's like, well, I, I was only going 10 over. Okay, well, you're speeding. You get tickets for ten over, maybe not five over, but ten over, and he was, he was way over the line. It wasn't even close. No, and so I, I don't understand all the, all the complaining. Just maybe after they look at it, they'll have a different view of it. Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T ninety seven three, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Good morning with Jamie Lint and Jeff McGuire. I'm Chuck Hines. We'll have uh, High School Fan Zone tonight on 100.7 The Score. Coaches from Coronado, Estacado, Lubbock High, and Monterey will visit. Okay. Uh, We'll also have uh, the Cowboy Hour. It'll be a victory Monday uh, on the Cowboy Hour tonight. That'll be at 6. Cowboys winning over the uh, Philadelphia Eagles last night. Just absolutely creamed them. So now they're they're tied for the lead in the NFC East. We'll have uh, Monday Night Football on for you tonight the the game that features the giants and the packers that's the game that we'll have uh tonight there are two monday night games tonight i had Um, to pick one or the other i went with the one with the nfc east team in it okay yeah okay (laughs) yeah that's 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 that seems reasonable plus um the other game features the miami dolphins in any way that i can keep away from promoting tyreek hill is uh definitely a goal of mine there's, there's some that think he's going to be the MVP. That's great for the league. Yeah, you know, awesome. I mean, he'd be the first wide receiver to be uh, a National Football League MVP if, if that happens. Um, okay, so I have this feeling, and, I, and look, I, I don't, I don't have any inside knowledge here. I didn't, I didn't go when they were moving uh, the team out of the football building into the West Side and say. Um, just kind of lurk around and listen. I just, I just have this feeling that Taj Brooks is going to come back next year and play for Texas Tech. That he's going to kind of look at this from a, a business standpoint and maybe a personal standpoint. Um, but that from a business standpoint, it'll be better for him to stay in school another year than to risk it and try to be a free agent and uh, 
and come up with nothing and then have to go get himself a a real job um something that's completely different than what he's doing um but that's that's just a a, a gut feel that i have um i don't know if you have any similar feelings to that or not i think my gut is telling me that he's going to come back as well and um we had heard that there was a number thrown out of what he wants to mm-hmm. stay uh it feels like if there was if there was any truth to the fact that that he there's any thought that if a certain amount was given that he would stay mm-hmm. i have no idea if the what the amount is or what it is you know how much it is whatever what the real think, number is yeah i would think that that means he's definitely willing to stay mm-hmm. and thinks it would probably be a good idea mm-hmm. okay otherwise no if if he was super confident that i'm going to go i'm going to make a team i'm going to get a big contract whatever i'm going to get a, a three year deal rookie money whatever then he wouldn't be considering the 200 grand or 500 grand or whatever yeah that's going to be offered here yeah okay like i i think no matter what that money is if he was hearing from the nfl scouts you're a surefire nfl player I don't think whatever the money here was is. I don't think it would matter. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And those guys are around all the time. Yeah. And they don't just come around on pro day. I mean, so, so I'm I'm guessing that that he's getting information from scouts or you know advisors or whatever that you know it's not a sure thing and you might swell take advantage of getting another year of school and get mm-hmm. another year of nil money and then see what happens next year. Mm-hmm. You know. That that that's that's what's my, the reason that my gut is telling me what your gut is telling yeah, you. Yeah, I, I I feel yeah. similarly. Um, mm-hmm. And I I think when you so like if you were to compare, let's just say he was out of eligibility, and you had to compare him to Sir Roderick Thompson in terms of potential in the NFL, you would you would still put Sir Rod, like if it's just the both of them coming out at the same time, and let's just say everything's equal, you would say Sir Roderick. Is the better has the better chance for an NFL career than Taj, right? Man, I don't. I don't he's they're just so different in mm-hmm. what they do. Sir Roderick plays more of the NFL style of, you know, being able to catch the bat of all the backfield and mm-hmm. be a little bit more explosive. And like we were talking about before, teams don't usually have that, <clears throat> you know, that horse that you know runs the ball twenty times or twenty five times a game anymore. We don't see that very often. And Taj is more of that guy, you know. And so, you know, he one of the leaders in the country in broken tackles and all that good stuff. You just don't see running backs as much in the NFL run through guys. Mm-hmm. And so you've got to be shiftier. You've got to be faster, all, all of those things. And that's where I just feel like Sir Roderick's game fits the NFL a little bit more than Taj just does. Even though I think Taj was the better back here at Texas Tech, you know, I had the you know much better big season that, mm-hmm. that Taj had last year. So I don't know. It just feels like um, it. It feels like you're probably right, and that Sir Roderick has the better chance. But I, I just I don't know. I, I think Taj was terrific last year. I thought he showed more of a burst than I thought he had in him. Um, you know he's a he's a smart runner and that he's patient and it's not very often that he misses the hole um you know i can remember one time specifically in the UCF game early in that game uh towards the north end of the field where he missed it and then you went for it on fourth down a down later and didn't get it um he but, could sure help you if he came back though yeah so i i'm just i just feel like he's a really smart back and all of that all of those things and so um I, I I wouldn't be surprised to see him find a spot in the NFL and and stick around for a few years like running backs do. But I, I also would not say that it, there's it's oh that he's a no brainer. He's going to go to the next level yeah. and be great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how did you feel? Uh, how do you feel about uh, Loic Fungi playing in the in the bowl game, even though he's uh, in the portal? And then along the same lines of Coach McGuire, which I thought was it's, I think it's very big of him. Um, it's it's similar to when an employee leaves a, a company 
where he said, hey, as long as the player leaves the right way, comes in and talks to me and we have a conversation and um, we, we do it professionally, then they're stuck with me for life that I'll always help them and support them. Um, I think that's very, I think that's very big of him uh, to have that philosophy and to say that. And then uh, to say to Fungi, hey, you may not get a whole lot of targets, but you're welcome to play since you helped get us here. Yeah, I think it speaks to the fact that Fungi's not angry with our coaching staff, or it's mm-hmm. not that he thinks there's a bunch of jerks here that he doesn't want to play for, or he doesn't like, or whatever, or he doesn't like his teammates. It just speaks to, I want to go somewhere where I'm going to get more targets. But the fact that he still has interest in playing in the bowl game, I think, speaks highly for him. And I think it speaks highly for Coach McGuire that he still wants to play for that guy, even yeah. though he knows, you know, I'm not getting a ton of targets already and probably will continue to not, but... You know, who knows? So I, I think that's cool on both sides. Um, I, I, I can appreciate that. Again, it's how you leave and how you handle the situation, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I I think it's great. Yeah. So I think, and, you know, I mean, he he made that quite clear that um, he'll um, he'll still, you know, and, and, you know, for some of these guys um, that are in the portal that leave, some of them have, have graduated from here. So they're... Um, you know they're 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 tech alums. I mean, even even if they do go and finish their uh, career somewhere else, so that's that's uh, that's. I thought that was uh, I thought that was an interesting take for him, and it's 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 the healthier take. It's being the bigger man, um, um, and and sometimes all of us have a hard time, you know, uh, doing that, showing that, and being that. Mm-hmm. You, you know, when and look, sometimes like if uh, you have an employee leave you. Uh, sometimes it's to their to the betterment of them for them to go somewhere else, whether it's across town or to another city or to another company, and they might have an opportunity to make more money and have a bigger responsibility, and you know who knows maybe close to their house or whatever. But if they just kind of drop you and just say, "See ya," uh, today's it, like right now, or as opposed to having that conversation, you probably have a different feeling about that person when you run into them over the next five, 10, 15, 20 years, because you, you do have those, um, the world is round and it it does, it does, it does, it does come, it does come, does come back around. And then we've all had people that have worked for us and we still have uh, great relationships or we have people that you go, yeah, I really wouldn't. Um, if he was burning, I probably wouldn't throw water on him. It happens. It happens. Right. It happens. It's just it's just life. All right. That's uh, part of our road to Shreveport uh, today, our coverage all week long, that uh, is brought to you in part uh, here today by uh, McGavick Nissan and also uh, many fine others here this morning on uh, the morning drive. And so... We uh, look forward to our coverage all weekend long. Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Time now for Jamie's question of the day on Lubbock Sports Station. Double T 97.3. All right, gentlemen. I have a two-parter for you. Okay. But I think it's pretty easy. (laughs) Sometimes we struggle with these. Okay, so um, I'm going to ask you two questions. Mm -hmm. Number one, on a scale of one to ten, I want you to tell me what your confidence level is for the Red Raiders in said bowl game on the road to Shreveport with uh, Cal and the Independence Bowl. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to give me, and I think I know what our answers will be, but I'd be interested in the audience's answer on this. It just feels like... It's really quiet when it comes to people talking about the bowl game. So I want the other answer to be, on a scale of 1 to 10, what's your care level for this bowl game? Mm. Okay? Um, It just feels like our Red Raider community is just quiet about it. That doesn't mean that there are not going to be people go to the game. doesn't mean there are not going to be people watching it. It just, it just, there's not a lot of people asking me about, you know, hey, what do you think of the matchup or yeah, right. anything like that? Mm-hmm. You know, how good mm-hmm. is Cal or any mm-hmm. of that? Mm-hmm. It just seems really quiet. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so my the the first response, my first response is, 
Um, seven with regard to my confidence, confidence level. levels is a seven. I think, uh, I think that part of that, a lot of that goes with your quarterback is probably going to be as, as healthy as he's been Baron Morton since maybe he entered the game against West Virginia. So I'm, I'm curious the fact that Taj Brooks is coming back. I've, I've have felt really good about your defense um, and, and your ability to, to hold teams down. So that, and then, yeah, I, th- I think you're right. I think the care factor is not very high um, for this bowl game. I think if you were to stop a thousand cars at, uh, you know, sixth and Avenue O here um, or sixth and Q right behind us, there's more traffic at sixth and Q than sixth and O. Um, I-, I think if you to say, Hey, if they just said to us, we're going to give you a, we're going to give you a check and going to give the players their, their swag, but you don't have to play the game. I think 75% of the people would say, yeah, I'm good with that. Let's just call it a year and let's on to recruiting and on to worry about next year and reboot and move on as opposed to playing the game itself. So, yeah, I think the care factor is, is not very high at all for this game. Okay. Real quick, are you talking about the fan base care factor? I mean, or you can it could be either. I, or I was just going it. with my personal care okay. factor. but Because um, I, I would agree with everything Chuck just said yeah, on the fan base. I would agree, too. I would agree with what Chuck just said. My care factor? Yeah, I want to put it on Cal again. I, I, enjoyed, I enjoy having fond memories of 2004, and I would like to continue those this year. And, you know, Cal's one of those schools that – Anytime you get a chance to to line up against them, I'm a fan of beating them. They're they're kind of nose in the air, without a lot of reason to be for kind of school. Uh, so I'm at like a seven or an eight. On I'm gonna be locked in watching it on uh, Saturday night. That's what my plans would entail, even if I wasn't working here. I I'm gonna be watching the bowl game. Uh, as for confidence, six and a half, seven, tops. Um, I do think getting a chance to get healthy can really help this team, although that continues to drop every time I see another name enter the transfer portal. Not a lot of the guys that you've entered the transfer portal have been like key cogs in your your non-offense, but, you know, it'd be nice to have someone to throw the ball to and someone to block for Baron Morton and Taj Brooks in the bowl game, and we're getting close to those numbers being single digits. So, I... I Confidence is not near as high as my interest level. Okay, my my interest level is at a 10. I, I just feel like really? it is so different to be 6 and 7 compared to be 7 and 6. This game, to me, is... I mean, to be below 500 for the season just feels really icky. Oh, no question. Yeah. And so, no, no I, doubt. I mean, you can take the Cal factor out of it. You can take Pac-12 team. You can take arrogant California school. All, all, I just care about getting to seven wins. I don't want to be below 500. And so because of that, this one means a ton to me. Okay. I, I Maybe more than last year's game meant to me. So go back, uh, go back two years ago when you played um, Mississippi State. You were six and six, mm-hmm. or even, or even go back six years ago. Um, you were six and six and went to the Birmingham Bowl and finished seven and six. Did you win that game? Oh, you lost. Lost uh, that game. South Florida. Okay, I was. Should have won that game. Should have won that game. Yeah. Yeah. It just feels so different to me, it, and so because of that. Like I said, the matchup does not matter to mm-hmm. me. The bowl game, where it is, who it's, it just doesn't. I just want to finish the season above 500. I don't want to be below 500. Okay. So, um, my confidence. Do you think there's any carry? I mean, does it does it give you? I know I know generally how you feel about momentum going into the off season, but do you think it? Do you think it, there's a? Do you think it helps the fan base? You know, being seven and six as opposed to winning your last game, do you think it helps the program in general um, exponentially by winning? I don't think it helps the program. I think it helps the fan base be a little bit better. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, and and I include myself in that mix, and that's really all I'm talking about here. Yeah. 
Yeah. I don't think it like takes you to a different level of recruiting. I don't think yeah. all of a sudden everybody's like, oh, well, that's a program I want to donate to. Mm-hmm. I, I don't. I, I, you are where you are right now. But it just feels, I don't know. Man, we had such high hopes for this season to end it below 500. Right. To lose more times than you win. Yeah. Man, that, I mean, it just, that would really stink. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I, I I have major major interest in this one in that regard, um, and and it's different. Like the game against Texas, I, I went into it feeling like you didn't have a, much of a chance, you know. And so I just kind of accepted, kind of, kind of looked like our team was the same way uh, that you were going to be at six and six, you know. Uh, my confidence level. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but the offensive losing all those offensive linemen, I'm not as worried about the wide receivers because, I, I mean, whatever. It, you didn't make a ton of plays when you were here. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm worried to death about the offensive line, so my confidence level in the game is a four. A four, okay. Just in terms of ability to protect the quarterback. And yeah, and run the football run and the pass football. the football and all that kind of all stuff. All that kind of stuff. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. The Road to Shreveport on Double T 97.3 and 100.7 The Score is brought to you by Pollard Ford, Hub City Body Shop, Viva Land Group, McGavick Nissan, Twin Peaks, and Wild West Harley Davidson. Hey, good morning. This is the Morning Drive on Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com. We will uh, have boots on the ground in Shreveport, Louisiana on uh, Friday, all day long, and then all day long on Saturday as well as we get you ready for the Independence Bowl, Texas Tech and Cal. We come to you this morning from the First United Bank studio and look forward to hearing from you today on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Visual Edge IT hotline is open as well at 806-771-0973. Uh, so speaking about uh, Road to Shreveport in, uh, in our coverage, we get this from the Ace Flooring Center chat line. Text bowl game is the day after I have spinal surgery, so I hope I'm alert enough to take it in live. Otherwise, I'll have to watch the DVR of it. Guess that says I'm interested in the game. It's kind of early in the bowl season, but it is a tech football bowl game yeah yeah <laughs> well i mean i wish you well with your spinal surgery and yeah, uh, heck yeah and you know just just tell them not to uh not to tell you the score mm-hmm. and you know sometimes if you're on some of those kinds of, of painkillers you may have you may be watching it with friends that you don't even know they're there <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. so just keep uh keep that and keep that in mind um, uh, this from washed up guy. I've heard absolutely nothing about Cal in their season. I hope whoever plays for tech steps up and plays as best they can. That's from washed up guy. Syntex Hank says, I'm at a 5.75 confidence level only because, well, no reason, no real reason, just because, I mean, he had commas and everything there. Um, my personality sees the glass as a little bit more than half full. Okay. Okay. Um, do you like for the game? I guess you're concerned about the number of guys in the portal. What is it up to fourteen? But it, in general, are you are you concerned about the number of guys in the portal? No, no, I guess not. Just because it, I mean, as we, you and I were just looking at a list here. Cincinnati's up to twenty in the portal. Um, I, I just think it's, it's the way it is in college football now. There were three teams from the Big 12, including Utah, that that have 14. So I don't think it's a, a crazy, crazy amount. Um, you, you know, your wide receiver position didn't perform well this year, and, and some of those guys are leaving. And there's a good chunk of those guys are leaving. So I, I guess I felt like we could see that that was going to happen. Um, maybe I didn't expect all the offensive linemen to bail as well, but um, yeah, I, I don't know that I, I don't love it. Don't get me wrong, mm-hmm, but right. I I don't know. Um, and, and to hear Coach McGuire talk about none of it surprised us, you know, and having conversations with the guys, mm-hmm. um, you know, some of it surprised me, like Monroe Mills. Yeah, you know, some some of it surprised me, but um, yeah, I, I I guess I'm not overly concerned with it. I don't 
I, I think I'd love that number to be, you know, at five or six instead of 14, but mm-hmm. it's the way of the way of the college football world. And I'm sure you'll just replace them with other guys from the portal. Sure. Sure. I mean, not to be a, not to be a jerk or anything, but would you have been surprised if he had said, I was surprised? <laughs> I mean, not really. I mean, to be, to be, but it maybe, maybe not. Maybe so. Maybe you would have, maybe, I think we, I think we kind of, Get, hear what he says but I mean on the other hand it's like okay would you have been surprised if he had said I was surprised maybe maybe and maybe you would have said I would, if you would have gone through the list one by one yeah I was a little surprised by Monroe Mills mm-hmm. that might have been if you had said specifically you surprised about Monroe Mills going into the into the portal um, and maybe that would have been maybe that would have been you get uh, this from the Ace Flooring Center chat line uh, Cameron Valdez or uh, Entering the portal is good news for tech? Question mark. I, I I don't I wouldn't call it good news. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can try to be a little bit glass half full here and say maybe it's because he thinks Taj is coming back and yeah, he doesn't want right. to sit behind Taj again. He wants that's to kind of somewhere. what I prefer to think. I mean that. So that if that were the case, I think you'd call that good news. Yes, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I also the, know that Tech has offered another running back in, a, in the portal, and, um, and Coach McGuire talked about a lot of guys being here this weekend. So it's possible that, and not that Cameron is needed to see the guy to uh-huh. all of a sudden know that they they were looking at somebody else. But um, I don't know, maybe maybe, uh, maybe that also decided helped make the decision for for Mr. Valdez. Yeah, and you know. It's good. Going looking at the portal, I think the number was six of the last seven Heisman Trophy winners have been transfer guys, <laughs> <laughs> which, which is, and it's uh, it's, and I was thinking about this on on Saturday night as I was watching the as I was watching the Heisman presentation. I always like watching that, and I always like watching the the winner get announced and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I was thinking about this going, I guess. I guess the, the the transfer portal thing has almost become like, well, you got to have a Tommy John surgery to become successful as a pitcher. Eh, you got to you got to transfer in order to have success as a quarterback no. or something. No, I no, mean that, I would, that, that that is not true. <laughs> yeah, that is not true. Yeah, you got to transfer to have more people talking about you. Oh, okay. You're not cool unless you transfer. I got you. If you play the same school for four years. Mm-hmm. You're a dud. You're a dud. Yeah. It has nothing to do with you being successful. I was kind of being facetious. There. Caleb Williams was successful mm-hmm. at Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. He was a really good quarterback, okay, at Oklahoma. Tons of them. Dylan Gabriel, what, whatever. Jaden Smith or Jaden Daniels, whatever. Yeah. Jaden. Yeah. Jaden Daniels, right? Jaden Smith was good in <laughs> the last Karate Kid movie. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I, it always comes back to Karate Kid. I am, I, you know, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to watch that movie. It seems like there's always a lot of Karate Kid references, and uh, there have been some Karate Kid references on um, on Sunday Night Football uh, from time to time. Chris Collinsworth, I think, is a big fan of Karate Kid. That's good. Okay. Yeah, I, I that that notion disgusts me. Okay. It's not about. Need I need to go have more success? Mm-hmm. I mean, these guys are bailing in programs that they're the starters, right. On good programs, right? No, that look like they're in the incumbent to start again the next year. Mm-hmm. I mean, they do it for attention. Yeah. Or I want to go do something different now. I, I this is I've experienced life in the Big Ten. Now I want to go play in the SEC or the ACC. I just want to do something different. Or wherever they are is not good enough, even though it's really good. Or or, or one of these other schools offer me more money. Could be, yeah. Yeah, it's not about having success. Yeah, could be, most, most likely yeah, that be. that notion just drives me nuts. This has been the Morning Drive Podcast, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Check out our library of Double T 97.3 podcasts at DoubleT97.3.com.